Hello, everyone. GM, let's see if uh, we're now live. Okay, great. Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome to this week's market research. This week has been nothing but historical as we see the Ethereum spot ETFs trading in the US. Though the anticipation, in my opinion, was not as strong as when the BTC ETFs, when the BTC ETFs launched. The ETH ETF still made a strong debut that made over 1 billion in trading volume on its first day with the Ethereum ETF, with the Ethereum spot ETF now trading and in the books. Price still continues to hover from the ranges of 3,100 to 3,600. This now begs the question, are the ETFs a real game changer that would serve as a catalyst to bring the crypto markets to all time high back again? or? Is it another hype event that marks the local tops or even the cycle top, which introduces a possible bearish reversal? So in this session, we will try to decipher how the launch of the ETFs went for the first two days and how it impacted the market. So with me today is our great friend, Brian, who is the head of content at Sentiment. Brian would be helping us later to analyze the impact of the ETF launch to to Ether, the asset, and to the whole market as a whole using the sentiment platform. Okay, so to uh, get started with our session today. Uh, okay. So, bef so to begin our session today, let's just have a brief introduction or a brief review on what happened in this past two days. So uh, on Tuesday, nine, e nine e ETFs issued by traditional fund issuers like BlackRock and Fidelity and others, along with crypto-based companies like Grayscale and 21 shares started trading. And they generated more than 1.02 billion in cumulative trading volume with 106 million of net inflows. What's more interesting is the spot ETFs reach 50% of the BTC ETFs volume in the first 90 minutes of trading. So to give you a short uh, background of how we were able to uh, get here, here is an Ether ETF timeline. So Ether has come a long way since the CME introduced Ether futures in February 2021. This timeline highlights the significant milestones in the journey of Ether ETFs. From the initial futures ETF applications in May 2023 to the resurgence of filings and regulatory victories. Key moments include Grayscale's legal triumph in August of 2023, the debut of six, six Ether Future ETFs in October of 2023, and the landmark SEC approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs in January 2024. This momentum continued with Bitwise's filing for a spot Ether ETF in March 2024, which saw an increased bipartisan support in May, uh, support in May 2024, and the listing of the multiple e ETFs now in July. So this progression underscores the the growing acceptance and the maturity and the regulatory evolution of Ether as a significant player in the crypto investment landscape. But the real question is, how did the Ethereum ETF flows perform in its first two days? So on the first day of trading, the nine ETFs recorded a total volume of uh, 1 billion of over a billion dollars. The real question, but the real, but the most important metric in discussing ETFs are actually the inflows and the outflows. So for the first day, it generated positive inflows with 106.7 million, and on the second day, trading and on the second day of trading, the total volume was lower, but uh, it can be considered at par with the launch uh, with the with the day one at 951 million. The issue on day two was the reported net outflows that, and at the time of writing, at the time of writing uh, this article, uh, date from several sources don't actually don't add up to the reported 951 million. So, 
uh, it will be up for uh, verification. Verification. But just to give you heads up on the day two trading of the ETF, seven ETFs posted inflows with Fidelity and Bitwise leading the group with the largest net inflows posting 74.5 million and 29.6 million respectively. Now, let's try to decipher if the ETFs is really a top signal or it could be uh it could be the start where cryptos would emerge higher so let's start with the the top signal so the bear case number one so for the bear case number one is the market rotation from the tech assets so in an article published by bitwise asset management last july 2 ether was referred as a high growth technology play and as stated by Matthew Hogan of uh, Bitwise Asset Management, Ethereum is wholly different. Ethereum is structured as a technology platform. It is a fully programmable blockchain that serves as the backbone for new crypto-based applications like tokenization, stablecoins, and DeFi. So here you can see uh, the difference from Bitcoin and Ethereum in terms of how uh, Wall Street perceives it. So Ethereum being considered as a technology play is relatively good for E as it shows the maturity of the asset. However, tech stocks are currently selling off. So right now, I think uh, NASDAQ is down uh, another 1% coming from a 3% drop from, la from yesterday. So and it's coming from the intense political uncertainty affecting the technology sector as the Biden administration is mulling plans to impose more sanctions on uh, Chinese tech firms and uh, the heightened semiconductor trade restrictions between the U.S. and China. And even former, uh, former President Donald Trump is speaking negatively of Taiwan semiconductor manufacturing. In addition, the massive global outage of Microsoft's Windows operating system from last week also doesn't help. So here we could see the chart of NASDAQ from yesterday, where we see a 7.85% dec decline from last week. So it's a big drop for the technology-driven index. Now for the base, for the bear case number two. The bear case number two is our price predict predictions were just too optimistic. So here I actually share the a quite good article uh, from Andrew Kang. So Andrew Kang is a popular crypto tw Twitter personality and partner of um, Mechanism Capital. So he made a sobering perspective on the potential impact of Ethereum ETFs. So he provided two strong takes here with the first one being uh, the current valuation metrics for Ethereum is at 300x price to sales ratio, and there is actually negative earnings after inflation. And using this as parameters, it, it makes it harder to sell to traditional finance allocators who are looking at this kind of parameters. So at Kang's perspective, this suggests that crypto community's enthusiasm for Ethereum may be highly disconnected from the preferences of the the mainstream institutional investors who we are wait who the community is waiting for for several years now and another take from kang is ethereum etfs might might have a much smaller impact than the btc etfs uh, he estimates that the actual new money from etfs could be as low as 0. Uh, 0.84 billion to 1.5 billion so he's using this uh, computation of true net buying, where figure is derived uh, after accounting the spot rotations and the delta neutral flows from the spot ETFs and the futures ETFs. So this estimate is actually significantly lower than many market participants might expect. So if you want to know more about his methodology and the computations that he made, uh, you can check it out on his Twitter, but I'll also be sharing this article for you guys to see. So 
moving on to to the bull case the bull case number one that i indicated here is the ettfs actually on day one had uh had covered had almost covered the the year's supply inflation for ethereum so ethereum supply for 2024 increased by 50,000 ether which amounts to 160 million and the first day of etf inflow generated 106.7 million of demand, which almost covered the whole uh, ETF, ETF uh, supply inflation for the year. So looking at the ETFs alone, this is another avenue where this is another avenue of inflows per ET, which is a bullish, bullish sign as it confirms the institutional demand for the asset. So the bull case for the bull case number two, it is actually the ETH ETF launch is actually the second best ETF launch of all time. So going back to the Bitcoin ETF launch, and I would like to quote the head of research of 21 shares here, Adrian Fritz. It actually, uh, the Bitcoin ETF sets the new standard and was the most successful ETF launch in financial history. So if we use uh, the BTC ETF launch as the standard to put ET, it would put uh, the Ethereum ETFs in the second spot as BTC generated 4.7 billion on its day one of trading uh, compared to the 1 billion, over 1 billion uh, generated by ETH. And uh, another quote here that I would like to uh, state is uh, the quote from Matt Hogan, which uh, he did an interesting comparison where he compared uh, the day one total volume of Ethereum ETFs with the other ETPs in which he said that uh, the regular ETPs are actually doing millions of trading uh, on the first day and then had a significant drop in the volume on the following day. So at the current rate, uh, ETF analysts are looking at a possible 3.6 billion of additional inflows in three months. And that goes for the first, for the first uh, portion of our of our session today and i would like to turn you over to brian to present a more on-chain analytics of how the ethereum etfs affected actually affected the market so let me bring brian hi brian hey great to be here i'm looking forward to talking about ethereum for a few minutes and uh, yep. going over a few of the metrics sure so brian is it time to panic <laughs> No, it doesn't seem like it's time to panic really at all. I think uh, just as some of you may remember with the Bitcoin ETFs back when they were approved in mid-January, there was about a two-week letdown where everyone uh, was expecting prices to rise and we got the opposite result. And uh, we may very well see a very similar result here, especially if the crowd has forgotten about the last time uh, when Bitcoin was having its own ETFs approved. So. Um, Essentially, the way sentiment functions is we make metrics that rely upon the markets moving the opposite direction of the crowd's expectations. So if the crowd is expecting rise, 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 then we're more likely to fall. If it's a lot of falling uh, from the crowd as far as expectations go, then we are more likely to bounce. So in right. this case, we are uh, seeing a lot of panic, a lot of FUD, and that is, if you're a bull, uh, a good thing because people are getting close to that capitulation point where they release their coins and say, I'm tired of crypto. This is a bad investment. I should have never owned Ethereum or Bitcoin or any other asset. And right when that happens historically is generally when we see a turnaround and prices start to rise. So there's no guarantee of exactly when it's going to be, but the more negative the crowd tends to be, which we can quantify, the uh, more likely we are approaching that point in which we're about to see a relief rally. Amazing insights, Brian. So you might want to share uh, some dashboards from Sentiment. Yeah, I'll go ahead and share. Okay, turning the floor you know, over to you, Brian. Perfect. I assume you can see my screen okay here? I think so. Okay, so this is the price of Bitcoin versus the S&P versus gold. 
And then we're also looking at the funding rate of Ethereum. I'm going to unlock this so we can actually see the price of Ethereum instead of Bitcoin. Normally, this template shows Bitcoin by default, uh, but Santiment has a lot of functions like this where you can simply lock or unlock and get different assets compared on the same template you just had. It's a, it's a really cool feature. I'll definitely make more videos you guys can check out in the future. Uh, but as far as Ethereum goes, you know, we can see the topping that started to occur right when the S&P here started to have its downturn. Now, I don't think the Ethereum ETFs had anything to do with the S&P 500 hitting a top. Uh, there is simply far too many other factors, uh, especially with the U.S. presidential candidates uh, changing seats and, you know, the Trump assassination attempt. There have been a lot of different factors that have impacted the S&P 500. But Ethereum is essentially going to be uh, right here in the, the mix of how Bitcoin is performing relative to S&P 500. Now, you can see I now added the last three days or so where you can see the fall really be beginning and going in tandem with what the S&P 500 and gold are doing. So everything is dropping together. Uh, and keep in mind, this purple down here is representing the funding rates. Uh, and we were seeing quite a bit of shorting. Anything that's below this zero axis line means there's a, a fair bit of betting against the asset. And usually when that happens, prices rise. You can see there was a lot of shorting right here, and then it kind of dried up a little more once it started to fall. So everyone who was shorting back here is kicking themselves that they weren't shorting on this big drop that's occurred just in the past 24-ish hours or so. That generally is how things work. And uh, just another reflection how the markets tend to move the opposite direction of the crowd's uh, expectation. Now we can also see the social volume of the Ethereum ETFs and how much people are actually talking about it. We simply use the formula ETH and ETF or Ethereum and ETF and look for any uh, messages on the internet that are uh, using this combination of words together. We scrape on Telegram, Reddit, X, 4chan and Bitcoin talk. You can see especially just how much Telegram and Reddit were talking about the Ethereum ETFs. And yes, that generally indicated a top. Now, for comparison, if I were to do BTC ETF, and we go back to January when this all began, we'll just make it, uh, we'll do it like that. So this is July through January of last year, up until the beginning of this year. Here is where the Ethereum ETFs, or I'm sorry, the Bitcoin ETFs were publicly released, obviously. You can see all the social volume. And yeah, shortly after, roughly 24 to 36 hours is where we saw that official top. Uh, that, of course, is Ethereum. Even more precisely, you can see Bitcoin seeing that top in the midst of all of this social volume. But what happened shortly after? Let's just add six days to this. And now it's starting to rise here. And you'll notice how much the social volume is really starting to drop off. In fact, right when people started to talk about the, uh, the Bitcoin ETFs negatively, when it was really dropping down in price, that's when we got that bottom. So we could see something very similar happen with Ethereum sometime in the next week to two weeks where, you know, if this happens, it doesn't necessarily need to, but if Ethereum really starts to drop further, get below 3,000, maybe in the 2,800 range, just as an approximation if we continue to fall. And then we start to see kind of a second resurgence of Ethereum ETF social volume. That would be a sign that the crowd is capitulating and saying, oh, these ETFs were not a big deal. I should have never gotten so hyped about them. They were never something that we should have been bullish about. These are the kind of signs that would indicate we are approaching that bottom and we could very soon see a big bounce from ETH coming right afterwards. So look for the crowd to kind of signal when these bottoms hit. Uh, of course, the crowd and social volume in general is just one of the many tools. Uh, I already mentioned the correlation with the S&P 500 
And of course, we can look at just a, a couple quick on-chain messages before we uh, conclude this video. So circulation-wise, not much special here. Daily active addresses, notice how low it is. And this could be you know, the, the new normal for at least a couple of months because remember, there are going to be a percentage of Ethereum holders who've decided I no longer want to hold on chain. I'm going to get my exposure through the ETFs instead. And that's going to factor in, of course. But it, it won't necessarily impact price because, of course, we have new volume coming in through the ETFs to substitute what we might be lacking in daily active addresses. I would also pay very close attention to average trading returns. So the 30-day mean value to realized value is still up at about 5.5%, and the long-term returns are still way up at plus 31%. So these are big, big swings. Um, in fact, I'm sorry, I didn't refresh. So let's look at over the last uh, few days and how that's changed. And it has come down to earth. So negative four and a half percent is actually starting to enter a buy zone. We want to see both of these MVRV lines in negative range. The positive one is the is the 365 day MVRV. So we'd still love to see this drop a little bit more, uh, but it's not a bad short term time to buy, according to this uh, metric, because of the fact that the swing traders, those that have been active in the past 30 days, they've started to, to get into the red, meaning you'd be buying with less risk than average. The higher it is, that's where you see increased risk. And then one more thing, uh, whale transactions are kind of ebbing and flowing, not too big at the moment. Uh, mean dollar invested age, this would indicate that the dormant addresses are really starting to get active. But as of now, the last time we really saw a big spike was way back in mid-June, about seven weeks ago. Notice this network realized loss. This was the biggest realized loss that we've seen since May 29th. It's indicative of capitulation, people starting to give up and moving their coins while they're already at a deficit on their investment. We want to be seeing this, um, and as we can see in previous examples, this one and this one were essentially local bottoms that led to big rises. I wouldn't get too excited just yet because it's a pretty minor one, but if we see another one that's you know beyond $130, $100 million of realized loss, that would be a good sign that we're uh, pretty close, if not right at that bottom. And then, of course, social dominance. You can see how the percentage of discussions related to Ethereum versus all the other assets in crypto really spiked up here back on the 22nd, beginning of the week, um, and it's kind of dropped ever since. So, yeah, I, I think that's a pretty clear sign that we were getting close to a top, just like we saw back here in late May where Ethereum went on this huge run. I believe this was right when they announced that the Ethereum ETFs were about to be approved. And uh, it was a matter of time until they'd be public uh, for people to trade. Uh, so people got very euphoric. There was that big spike. So people reacted to the spike and the news, and then we saw a big top. So that generally is how it works. The crowd is going to dictate how things go. And this is the last piece. This weighted sentiment here is very positive right now, just like we just looked at that same time when the Ethereum ETFs were announced, everyone got euphoric. And that's why these big positive spikes are showing, indicating a, a large amount of FOMO comments on social media compared to FUD comments down here. So generally, we'll see FUD comments right when we're seeing bottoms, and we'll see big uh, quantities of FOMO when we're at the top. And uh, right now, as you'd imagine, we're still on a week where it's a lot more FOMO. And even when we're dropping, people are telling everyone else to buy the dip. We want that enthusiasm to calm down a little bit and be replaced with worry and fear. And uh, as Warren Buffett calls it, blood in the streets. Those are the clear indicators that it's time to buy uh, as others are in pain and fearful of the markets. And that's it from me, my friend.
All right. Thank you, Brian, for that amazing insights. Actually, uh, I was very interested on the MVRB 30 days. I think it's now on the buy zone. Actually, I'm, I consider myself as a medium term uh, position trader. So I'm actually incorporating the MVRB 30 days into my trading strategy as well. So before we go into our uh, short discussion, let's check if there are some questions from our audience. Okay, so I see there's no questions as of yet. So I think I'll shoot my questions up, Brian. So with the addition of the inflow and the outflow of the ETFs, so with the addition of these mechanics, how would your process go in analyzing the market uh, would be right now? Uh, based on the inflows and outflows of the ETFs? Yep. So. So there's uh, additional inflow and outflow mechanisms from the ETFs, and then there's the on-chain analytics or the price action coming from on coming uh, on chain. So I'm actually curious on how you do your analysis for Bitcoin and Ethereum. So do you uh, put weights on your analysis? Are you are you more into the on-chain analytics, or do you also incorporate the inflows and the outflows of the ETFs that's happening daily? Yeah, we look a little at the inflows and outflows of the ETFs. Generally, when there are more coins moving in, it's a good thing. It means that there's interest in buying, of course, uh, and they are official buys if they're inflowing into the ETFs. Uh, it kind of we like to look at it in correlation with supply and exchanges. A little bit and just oh, right, overall right. overall amount of hodlers so if there's a lot of supply moving on to uh exchanges that's a sign of a sell-off and oftentimes that that'll correlate with etf inflows because people are moving off of the blockchain altogether and getting into etf exposure instead uh, ideally we want to be seeing supply staying off exchanges and etf ETFs getting more and more inflow. That would be a sign that there's just more fiat moving into crypto in general. So uh, we we like to look at that as a good leading indicator as far as the ETFs go. And just the overall volume can be a good sign as well when that's spiking. So for the sake of our audience who are listening, uh, I'd just like to confirm on what you said that the supply on exchanges indicator on sentiment actually also covers the uh, inflows and the outflows that is happening on the ETFs. Is that right? Correct. Right. Amazing. So uh, I guess my next question here is what I think that I found interesting during the first day of the ETFs is the ETH ecosystem actually had a significant price increase. So the L2s had about 2 to 5% increase during the run-up. And uh, how could you suggest uh, the users of sentiment to uh, to possibly cover uh, or discover this price uh, uh, to discover this price fluc uh, price fluctuations that is happening uh, for the ethereum ETFs so just curious on how they could use uh, sent the sentiment platform on uh, finding some gems on how uh, they could spot this uh, price increase from the Ethereum ecosystem? Yeah, I think using whale transactions can be a big one there when you see a, a large spike in key stakeholders moving coins. Uh, that's a clear sign that the likelihood of the trend reversing is very high. So when can you, you saw share, one, uh, can you probably share the screen, Brian? So uh, I, I probably. Just... Maybe we save it for next time uh, because of the fact that I do have that hard stop. But oh. I, I can just quickly describe that um, you can go on Santiment and, and show the whale transactions on Ethereum, and you'll see when prices are climbing, you'll often see spikes appear, and then all of a sudden we see a dip. Uh, just like when the crowd gets FOMO, same thing. You see a big reversal. So look for whale transactions. Look for key stakeholders. Um, especially, you know, people who own over a thousand ETH, if those wallets start to accumulate, that's a very good sign. Things of that nature, I, I would recommend highly. Great. So just a final uh, question here. So I saw here at the sentiment social trends, and I see here that the Nashville and Bitcoin is actually 
top seven and top eight in the trending words. So I think this is, is about the Bitcoin conference that would happen in Nashville uh, today until uh, Friday. So any insights about this, Brian? Uh, are you bullish about this event? Uh, what do you see? What are your market insights? Yeah, events are always interesting because they're already pre-known. And unless there's something significant that happens, uh, you know, Trump is likely going to say something pro crypto, which won't be a surprise, but could likely bump up the markets temporarily from some FOMOers who are watching the event live. Um, but but uh, events in general, even when a political figure is going to be there, it's uh, it's a little bit baked in. So there might already be some anticipation of Trump saying some pro crypto stuff that has caused some people to buy already. I wouldn't be too excited about a, a huge shift from it. But of course, uh, just a few events ago, we saw something significant happen with Donald Trump, of course. No, uh, you know, I, it's a serious matter, so I don't want to joke about that. But uh, it, clearly you want to look for anomalies and um, unexpected outcomes from events as a sign of uh, market turnaround. And, um, you know, obviously we're not a political channel, but we did note that the attempted assassination was kind of the rally sparker for crypto because oh. the crypto community, sorry? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, the crypto community tends to be pro-Trump from the evidence we've seen so far. So anything that bolsters his uh, probability of being the next president generally has shown signs of being bullish for crypto. So if he has a positive outcome on this conference, look for that to give a slight bump, even if it's a temporary one, to crypto markets. Interesting. We'll surely look for the social trends and sentiment in, during the during the whole span of the event. All Absolutely. right. So I think we reached the end of our stream. Let's check if the, there are questions from our audience. All right. I think there's no questions from the audience. So. Brian, before we let you go, uh, any final thoughts or uh, any message to the community, for, uh, any message for the sentiment community, for those who has question, who have questions or would like to address concerns about sentiment, where is the best channel to reach you guys? Yeah, you can join our Discord server. Just go to our uh, Twitter slash X channel at sentiment feed. Go to our link tree in our bio and you'll see our Discord. Uh, how to get a free trial for sentiment. Uh, you can use the code 3x capital in all caps, uh, where we have a 25% off discount code. Um, and it's a great way to support you guys as well as us. And we hope to see many of your faces in our uh, channel so we can chat markets with you. All right, great. Thank you so much, Brian. So it's been a pleasure to speaking with you, Brian, and discussing the markets, the impacts of the ETFs. Uh, so looking forward to seeing you again at our next market research. And uh, there you go, guys. Uh, thank you. And see you again next week on our market, on 3X Capital's market research. Bye.